On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV, where this week we are going to review a tablet. Yes, another tablet. Another Android 3.01 tablet. An Asus tablet. But this tablet has Michael Bay qualities, because this tablet actually transforms. the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV, the one and only screencast that tunes tech, the way of life, and let's let the technology work for you. My name's Nightwise, and on this Sunday evening, I'll be your host for the coming 30 or 40 minutes or so for this episode of KWTV, where we are going to review the Asus EEE Transformer. Welcome, guys and girls. Welcome for the great. Uh, welcome back to KWTV, and thank you for the great feedback to the last episode of KWTV, where we reviewed the HTC Cha Cha. Today we are going to do another hardware review. We are going to take a look at uh, Asus's uh, next top model, if we can call it that. Why? I feel very tired of Banks when I say that. The next top model, the next top model of the Asus line in their tablet series that actually does something extra as opposed to the rest. It actually transforms into, well, what can we call it? A notebook? A netbook? A tabloid? Tabloid, that sounds nice. Tablets? Tablet with a keyboard? We don't know. But safe to say that this will be the first netbook that will come into our hands that will actually come with a keyboard, a touchpad, a mouse and a touchscreen and Android, so it's kind of not a netbook, not a tablet, not a notebook, not a laptop, nothing really in between. We are going to check it out what it is. So stand by as we are going to review the Asus EE Transformer right here on KWTV. The Acer EEE Pad Transformer is one of several models that uh, Asus is bringing out in their uh, new tablet line. Android running devices, 10.1 uh, inch displays, kind of the same like the uh, Galaxy Tab 2 and the Motorola Zoom, but what of course is different about the Transformer is the addition of a keyboard. Now let's look at packaging. This is well done by Asus. I mean, I must say the box looks very pristine. They did it in a very classy style. And even if you look at the inside of the box, it is very well done. You see there is almost no edges. It really feels nice. You open up the box and the device is just there. The finishing of the tablet is very well done. Um, the box uh, also still holds the manual and the power supply, but those are not important right now. What I do want to say is that the power supply comes with, you know, a little adapter like this. Um, and this is kind of like the uh, iPad adapter. It really looks kind of the same. And I think it's the same than the one that they use on the Galaxy Tab. So no standard micro USB to charge the device. Now, the device itself, what I really like about it, and the first thing that Niana said when she saw this was... I like the color and the finishing. This is a brown golden color and the surface of the tablet is actually quite textured as you can see when I'm holding it in the light. Thickness is okay. You see you have the tablet at the top and the keyboard at the bottom, but what you immediately feel is that the weight of this baby is pretty darn heavy. Now why is this? Well, we'll just take a look at the device here. If we uh, take a look at the device, it actually consists of two parts, which I shall disconnect. On the one hand, you have the 10-inch tablet with a front and rear-facing camera. It comes with Wi-Fi, 16 gigabytes 
of onboard RAM, expandable of course, uh, expandable by uh, using an onboard SD card, and of course with a 1 gigahertz processor, if I'm not mistaken. I re should really look that one up because I'm not really sure about the specifications, but I'll put them in the show notes. Kind of run-of-the-mill tablet. It's pretty light. It's well done. I really like the finish and the design. And if we take a look at um, what's on here, at the bottom we have, of course, the power connector, uh, which we've seen before, and two locking uh, slots to connect them to the onboard keyboard. At the side you have the volume and the power button, which is not really exciting. And here we have our mini jack for our audio, our HDMI out, so same with, with the Motorola Zoom, and the SD card. Now, you would say, okay, it's a, it's a standard tablet, there's nothing new, and there is actually nothing new. We're not going to focus on the tablet itself, because quite frankly, we've reviewed the Motorola Zoom, we've reviewed the Asus, um, sorry, we've reviewed the Galaxy Tab 2, nothing really new and exciting here. The screen's good, little glossy when you want to use it outside, but the tablet is pretty fast and pretty responsive, so all in all, a pretty good Android 3.0 tablet. But here it comes, a keyboard, a keyboard. Now, you could say this is logical, okay? Now, I, see, I want to enter text on my tablet, I need a keyboard. So a quick snap-on keyboard would have sufficed, kind of like a docking station, kind of like the docking station for the iPads that they have with the built-in keyboard. But this built-in keyboard goes a little bit further. First of all, it's a standard keyboard, it comes with a touchpad, which is not on the iPad docking stand, and two mouse buttons left and right. So that's also pretty cool, but here it's where it's becoming interesting. This keyboard has a power adapter slot. Why is that? Well, because the keyboard is actually a battery. It gives you eight extra hours of battery time on your Asus uh, EEE pad. So that is pretty interesting. And it also comes with, check this out. Let's see if I can get it open. Yes, 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 you see correctly. It comes with a USB connector. A tablet with a USB connector, and not a micro USB. No, 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 no. This is your run-of-the-mill, full-size USB connector that you can use to add peripherals to your tablet. And if you think one USB connector is enough, well, guess what? There is another USB connector on the other side. And as I mentioned, there was a micro SD slot on the Asus EEE tablet. Well, guess what? Here is another one. They have a standard SD card slot reader on the keyboard. This is great. It gives the tablet extra functionality. This is not so great because it makes the whole device pretty heavy. And what weighs is the battery. Now, if I take both devices and I need to say which one's heavier, I will say that the keyboard is the heaviest one of the two. Now, connecting the device is pretty nifty. See? Lock it in. Kind of locks in like that. And it will immediately recognize the keyboard and start working on the keyboard. Now we'll take a look at how the keyboard works and how it functions in a little bit. And uh, we'll get a little bit up close to the tablet to do that. When I first saw the Acer EEE Transformer, I thought, this is the cat's meow. This is the most ultimate tablet ever done. Because quite frankly, just look at it. I mean, it comes with a mouse pad and a mouse pointer, which dances across the screen, if you can see that. It comes with a keyboard, which is great. It comes with a screen. And look, it's a touch screen. You can scroll left and right, and you can type, and you can scroll, and you can do the mouse. And it has everything. And it's amazing. Or is it? Because, quite frankly, this is a tablet device with an extra. Or it's a netbook that doesn't quite do it. Or it's a laptop that doesn't really work. Quite frankly, I, I've been working with the device for the last couple of weeks, uh, for the last couple of days, and I must say, I am pretty pleased with the device. That's all great and dandy. I mean, the hardware quality is excellent. This feels like a professional, super expensive netbook. You know, the ones that Sony make? 
the really expensive ones because this is uh, this is not plastic people this is aluminum the keys feel really solid the screen feels really good this is well well done price point I think it's about 499 to 599 uh, it only has 16 gigabytes of onboard RAM but that's easily expandable here on the tablet itself and here on the keyboard it doesn't come with 3G which is kind of a bummer but it has good Wi-Fi but I thought you know perhaps this is something new this is a tablet with something extra the keyboard is great I mean I've been working with it uh, there are special buttons to go to the home screen like for example this one there are buttons to uh, you know do the audio put it uh, in louder and a little bit less loud you can do the brightness automatically or manually um, so it all comes with these specially special functions that work really well when it comes to the interaction with the tablet part of the computer but then I went to a website and uh, you know because it's Android it's great to go to a website I mean I can uh, I can do this with the mouse by the way or I can just do this uh, with the on-screen keyboard and the combination of using both mouse and on-screen keyboard is nice because I tend to be typing and then when I, I want to go to another tab and I gotta just go <laughs> but I can't do this with a keyboard I can't uh, find a special function key that kinda does this with the keyboard so that is one of the things that I started to notice I was expecting keyboard laptop kind driven behavior from a tablet uh, it becomes really obvious when you go to the internet let's say you surf towards a certain website uh, let me see if I can open up the internet here where is the internet the internet I cannot find the internet um, I put the browser here somewhere I know you're screaming at your uh, laptops uh, by now so I went to one of the websites and I filled out a full now uh, there was a form to fill out with several uh, fill-in fields and it was nice it was great I was typing away and I must say that the uh, the tablet I, we, we still have to call it a tablet is a little slow to respond sometimes especially when you are typing pretty fast on the keyboard now it does have a little bit of trouble connecting here uh, so I'll just go back to the home screen but what I did encounter on the screen was that there were fill-in forms and you know I wanted to go to the next line in the fill-in form so I pressed tab that didn't work what uh, I was expecting was behavior like there is behavior on a notebook because that is what it looks like a notebook so when you when you uh, press alt tab you expect the device to go to the next application it doesn't you have to go to the application chooser and choose the other application from there so this is my dilemma what is this is this a tablet with a very heavy keyboard or is this a netbook that doesn't really have a real OS is this something more like Google's Cloudbook I don't really know but in the end it comes down to the fact that this device to me is something I just can't place right now it's a strange little well mashup of two things that somehow belong together and then somehow don't quite work together interacting with the tablet while you're using a mouse is funny is strange to, to get used to but when you want to use the tablet OS as you use a laptop OS it becomes kind of different because the tablet OS wasn't really written for it same when you add uh, additional hardware like for example a uh, an auxiliary mouse which works fine or a USB stick which works fine because you can go to the whole file manager menu and access all of the different um, uh, all of the different devices that you actually uh, connect so for example I can go to uh, the SD card here this is the SD card and there are several uh, SD cards that I could put in there so that is all well done but because it looks like a laptop you want it to act like a laptop and Android uh, isn't a laptop operating system so the jury is still out on this little device and we are still really um, not sure of what we think of it let's just see in the end uh, what it turns out to be let's round up our little review uh, of the Asus EEE Transformer. Well done!
anyways, that's about all we have time for on this episode of KWTV. As you can see, I am once again in the mobile studio heading uh, towards unknown destination. And I must say, I'm pretty pleased.